Hi, in this week's video I'm going to show you how to paint this frothy coffee with watercolour in simple to follow instructions. So grab yourself a brush and let's get started. Don't worry if you don't like drawing, in this information card on the top of your screen I'll show you how I traced this down. And the colours we're using are yellow ochre, cadmium red, carmine, sepia and burnt umber and I'll put all the equipment used in this tutorial in the description box below. To begin with I mix a watery mix of yellow ochre and burnt umber and I'm applying it to the brown colours within the froth of the coffee at the top like this. At this point the mix has to be really really watery so that we can build on the colours later. By the way the photograph and the line drawing for this tutorial will be put in the Facebook group The Wonders of Watercolour and once again I will put the link in the description box underneath this video. I carry on adding these colours just very simply with a smaller brush, blending it into the paper as I go by dampening the brush and patting it on some kitchen towel and blending it into the paper. This gives a really soft edge and I just continue this process until all the brown areas on the top of the coffee are completed. Once this first wash has dried, I add a little bit more burnt umber to the existing yellow ochre and apply this to some of the darker areas within the coffee foam as you can see. This just makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional. Once I've applied a tiny bit of colour, I clean my brush in water, pat it on some kitchen towel and just blend it into the existing wash using my brush like this. Continuing this process around the coffee foam. Now that the coffee foam has dried at the top, I start to mix two colours for the cup and saucer. For this I'm mixing cadmium red with a little bit of carmine and I'm going to dip in and out of these two colours to make it look less flat when I apply the colour. I'm using a spotter brush for this and I love these brushes because the bristles are quite stubby. It just means that it makes paint application a lot easier. You'll see me here as I hit the corner of the cup to blend in the colour using a little bit more water. This gives the illusion of the light hitting the left hand side as you can see. Like I said I'm mixing carmine and the cadmium red so that it gives a sense of less of a flat colour. These colours will be built up a little bit later. Just need to get this initial wash on so that we can start to build up form a bit later on. Once again, blending that paint into the outside edge. I'm adding a watered down version of the same colours to apply to the handle. The reason I'm making it lighter is because I notice there's quite a lot of dark shade underneath and we can build on that a bit later. Applying the same mix to the saucer, working around those coffee beans. Once I hit the right hand side of the saucer, I carefully paint around the glossy highlight as you can see. 
This will give the illusion of the, sh of the shininess of the saucer. Also, as I hit the highlight, I dilute, dilute the paint down a little bit, as you can see here. Adding a little bit of burnt umber to the carmine mix, just to give it a bit more depth, now that the first wash has dried, and I'm applying this carefully over the first layer of paint. carefully blending it into the existing paint. Now I'm adding a little bit more cadmium red and just painting around the coffee beans like this. Dipping in and out of these colours just gives it the illusion of it being less flat. If I were to use one colour it would just not look real enough. It doesn't really matter which order you put them in, it just gives it a little bit of texture and a little bit of realism. I'm just using the tip of my brush to work around these little coffee beans. It doesn't really matter what size brush you use. I'm using a uh, number three and a number six for this particular part, but just use whichever brushes you feel comfortable with. Using this darker mix to, to form the basis of a shadow, as you can see here. So this will be carmine or cadmium red with a little bit of sepia mixed in. It doesn't really matter which colour you use, but just be careful working around those highlights. You can see already that the saucer has a really glossy look about it. Just using a little bit of the watered down version of the paint to add a little bit of detail within the highlights. It looks as though there's a bit of a reflection within it, just as I'm doing here. Just using a soft brush to blur them together. Throughout this, I'm just paying careful attention to my reference photograph, details of which, as I said, I'll put in the Facebook group or will be in the description box below. That way you can join in yourself. I'm mixing yellow ochre with a tiny bit of sepia and I'm adding this to the outside edge of the saucer because I felt it was just looked as if it was just floating so by putting this color on the outside edge it just makes it look a little bit more uniform. I'm using a smaller brush to do this this is a zero size spotter but like I said use whichever brush that you have. I'm mixing a little bit of sepia with a little bit of cadmium red to make this darker colour to enhance the shadow that I've applied already. Particularly so on the handle as you can see, once more keeping a close eye on the reference photograph. Here I'm using a number six size spotter to glaze over the entire painting with a soft water glaze. In other words, just plain water and brushing it over the entire thing with a really light touch. I find this really helps merge the colours together and makes it look really, really soft. This is a flat synthetic brush and I'm using it just to lift out a little bit of detail within the highlights that I've gone over with paint. Let's focus on those coffee beans. Here we have yellow ochre with a tiny bit of sepia and a tiny bit of burnt umber. And we'll mix and match the two petals, as you can see, to make them look less flat and apply them over the base of the coffee beans like this. Just mix and match your colours, it doesn't really matter, you don't have to be too fussy at this point, as long as the coffee beans have a base tone, we can build on them a little bit later on. Be 
you can now apply a little bit more detail around these coffee beans, but make sure that your paint is dry before you do this. Continued that process and now I'm focusing my attention back on that coffee cup by mixing the same two colours as before, this time with a little bit more burnt umber once more to enhance the shadow and darkness of the red colour as you can see. Using, my tip, using the tip of my brush to get right into the corners to make it really really sharp. Watercolour is all about building up those layers, just really, really slowly. This way you won't get that really awful muddy effect that you can sometimes get if you apply your paint too thickly too quickly. Carefully working around those little coffee beans. Dip in once more in and out of these two colours that I have on my palette. I've purposely kept a limited palette for this tutorial. I've selected my colours from using my colour chart that I've made and I've put an information card on the top of the screen for you should you want to make one for yourself to make your colour selection a lot easier. Here you can see me just once more working around those tiny little coffee beans using a small brush just to get that detail. At this point, the consistency of the paint on my palette is slightly thicker. To begin with, we had a watery consistency. This time it's a little bit thicker so that we can make the application process a lot quicker. You can see me here just adding a little bit more shadow underneath the cup where it hits the saucer.
I think that food illustration has a bad press for being quite difficult, but I actually really enjoy it and I hope you do too. By the way, if you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's a way of letting YouTube know that you like me and I can continue bringing you these free tutorials. Once again, I'm blending this color into the existing washes using a damp brush like this, making sure, as always, I avoid that highlight on the left-hand side. I'm using a zero size spotter here just to add the tighter details within the coffee cup and the little highlight. Just carrying on adding these colours until the painting is complete. I'm applying a little bit of the Burnt Umber mix to the outside edge of the saucer here because I did feel it looked a little bit lost. And just working through to completion. If you enjoyed this video, then you may enjoy these videos on your screen right now. So click through and I'll see you there. Thank you for watching.